This video brought to you by our Patreons. Please consider supporting this channel and joining our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash NovaWing24. Hi there folks, my name's NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 5th of April 2020 and congratulations everyone, we've survived to April of 2020. Uh, I hope you are all keeping well, safe uh, and otherwise inside. Uh, please, as I said, I do hope that all my followers, all my viewers out there are keeping safe and uh, doing your best to flatten the curves as we talk about and also to stay home and flight sim. Uh, well, stay home and sim, even if you are more of a train simulator person as well. Uh, all right, so we're going to jump straight into the releases this week, and you would be pleased to see that there are quite a, there are still some releases going on, which is good, which is always good because development for gaming and uh, content still continues no matter what the rest of the world is doing. And we're going to get started with a release that just missed out on the uh, news from last week, which is the release from Orbix of their X Plane Eleven rendition of Carnifron Airport in Wales. Now, I had to stop myself because I thought initially that this was a port over because I thought Orbix had done Carnifron Airport um, for the ESP platforms back in the day, but I was wrong actually. It was Sim720 that had done the one for the ESP platforms. Um, whatever happened to that developer? Um, they sort of did a, some decent content and then they've kind of disappeared, but... Anyway, moving on, that's an aside. Uh, so this rendition of Carnifron uh, comes to us uh, from the tr developer of um, Orbix's True Earth Great Britain, one of the lead developers, Tony R Rubolsky. And uh, it's come to with a really highly detailed rendition of the airport, including two centimeter per pixel ground textures, like photoreal ground textures for the airport. That's insane level of detail, by the way. Had to be drone footage. Anyway, um, so custom color corrected, for the whole the airport area, plus also includes 30 centimeter per pixel uh, imagery for the surrounding airport surrounding area and the town nearby. Includes a variety of custom buildings outside the airport as well as all uh, airport uh, actual airport buildings fully detailed in high resolution 3D models. Includes detailed 3D fencing, signage, and equipment, uh, all modeled from real world photographs as well. Full implementation of PBR material support for all airport buildings and ground textures as well. Uh, also includes uh, the historic RAF Landrog uh, Air Museum that's included there as well, which is a place that I really hope to get to and visit next time I get back to the UK. Uh, it also includes a variety of uh, surrounding points of interest for VFR flyers, because obviously this is primarily a VFR airport, and uh, including uh, Morpha, Holiday Park, Fort Bellan, and a variety of farmland in the surrounding area as well, all designed to work seamlessly with Orbix uh, GB True Earth Central. Now, as a little aside, one of the reasons why I love this airport in the ESP platforms uh, when I did it, and I'm sure we'll love it for the um, the x as well, is that it's obviously, like many airports in the United Kingdom, uh, it's an ex-RAF base. Uh, so you've got the, the sort of, you know, you've got multiple runways. However, <laughs> just be careful on one of the runways because there's two whopping great big wind turbines there. And yes, they are modeled accurately here, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, go have a look. I think this is a really great... Um, a uh, really great piece of scenery. I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like in X-Plane 11 because I've thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, the uh, the Sim 720 version, which is designed for Orbix. So, hmm, there you go. Now, if you are wanted to add this one to your collection, you are looking around about 19 US dollars or your regional equivalent, available now from Orbix Direct. Continuing on with X-Plane 11 releases this week, the guys over at 29 Palms have released their latest uh, uh, airport, which is their Airport Nuremberg. Um, now, this is a port over of their original version for the ESP platforms uh, from a few months ago. Uh, it's been ported over with uh, with the assistance from Captain 7. Um, so this come through and all airport buildings are modeled as they appear during 2019. Uh, full implementation of PBR texturing on both uh, 3D models and airport buildings as well as uh, ground textures as well. Includes 55 square kilometers of satellite uh, imagery outside of the airport boundary as well, including resolutions up to 20 centimeter per pixel, including a number of seasonal variations as well 
well, which is a bit of a uh, an uncommon thing. Well, I suppose it's suddenly become a bit more common when it comes to X Plane 11 content. Includes full implementation of HDR lighting as well, and a full set of uh, animated jetways and customer seasonal textures, as I said, uh, courtesy of the SAM2 plugin. Uh, includes a variety of snow and rain effects, as well as a detailed airport lighting, uh, custom vehicle animations for the apron, stat static aircraft with correct liveries and registrations for typical traffic, and a uh, implementation of an animated radar tower as well. So, pretty cool, pretty detailed set of uh, set, set of re uh, set of uh, realization of this airport. And as I said, it is a port over, so uh, it is at the airport as it appeared during 2019. Now you can pick this one up direct from either 29 Palm Store or from one of their, one of their redistributors, looking at about 25 US dollars or regional equivalent available now. Moving out of the X Plane, well, actually, no, I probably can't leave the X Plane 11 release without this because I'm sure somebody's going to pick me up in the comments about this. Okay, so Vulcan came out this week, Vulcan and Metal. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it um, because it's a an update to a core sim rather than a release of a new product um, but it's something that the community's been uh, the x -Plane community's been sort of smacking their lips and sort of crying for for a really long time ever since uh, Austin Meyer sort of announced that they would be working towards that um, word of warning is that before you click update and I cannot stress this enough before you click that update button Take your current installation of X-Plane 11, right click on it, click copy, click paste on another drive, another hard drive, an external hard drive, somewhere else on your computer, whatever, because it is a early beta, is all I can tell you. There is reports left, right and centre of so many people having issues, so many people not following the product and not just click, just blindly clicking OK and update and not realizing that they're agreeing to it because they're in a beta stream. So if you're happy with your X-Plane right now and you don't want to be on the bleeding edge of testing something, please, for the love of all things Flight Simulator and to save the sanity of everybody on the forums and the Facebook groups, please do not click update. Um, if you wish to take, do the update and realize that you may break, quite a lot of add-ons that you have um, or it yeah as, as, as people are finding out your experiences with Vulcan may vary um, then okay sure click update but make sure you've done that back up first so if it does break for you if it does go horribly wrong you can simply delete and re re put back your backed up copy so that's all I'm going to say about that otherwise for those who have seen success on it it does look pretty good so there you go Good luck if you choose to do it. I personally am not doing the update. I am sitting calmly on my stable version of X-Plane. I'm happy with it. It's stable. I like it. I'm rolling with it. Right. Cool. Done. Moving out of the X-Plane world, move into the world of the ESP platforms with the guys over at FSX3D, which is always thought was a bit of an interesting very simple but interesting name of a developer for flight sim content. It's a French developer that's been around uh, uh, for uh, quite a while. And he released his uh, latest release this year, uh, this week, of Aspera's Subenk Airport, uh, which is nestled um, in the the uh, mountains behind Côte d'Azur. Um, and is quite an interesting sort of realisation, actually, look, going through and looking at the stills of it. Basically, it's a small little GA field servicing some of the ski communities in the area. Um, and... It has sloped runways, so it's had a slope model, a slope runways modelled on it, um, and it's just an interesting little. If you're into somewhere that's got tricky approaches and off the beaten path, this could be an airfield that you might want to check out. Uh, very beautiful, highly detailed model, all buildings accurate as it appears during 2019. And has an absolutely charming character about it. It just looks really cool. Now, not only does is it uh, do a high detail rendition of all the airport buildings, it's also got custom seasonal textures across all seasons, including snow banks and snow drifts for during the winter months. So I'm really impressed by this one. Coming in for a pretty, uh, pretty, yeah, it's, it's a reasonable price. Coming in at about 24 US dollars, or your original equivalent, available now from Sim Market. 
continuing on with ESP releases and a prepared v4 exclusive release uh, guys from on final designs release their rendition of Croton airport and not only did they they, they released it but they released it to the community as for free as part of our ongoing global situation um, so this is a interesting little Italian airport that's uh, serviced by a couple of low uh, low cost carriers um, to provide sort of uh, access to Milan um, it's a, and various other places um, to provide access during the tourist season. Uh, so this is a highly detailed air, air, air rendition of the airport as it appears in 2019, including uh, all major airport buildings are included, all airport layouts correctly, correct and accurately placed, full implementation of dynamic lighting, uh, and full use of custom taxiway signs, custom content, uh, and hand-placed vegetation for the airport and the airport's area. Uh, looks really, really, it looks simple. The, the photo reel that it's merged with is a you know, it's a bit, it's a bit rough, um, but the actual content, the implementation of the HDR lighting um, looks pretty damn awesome, and you can't argue with the price, you really can't. So if you want to pick this up and give yourself a little bit of a different destination to go to, grab this one now, available now from On Final. Moving, uh, sticking with flight simulation, but moving to flight simulation of a different nature. Uh, Tower 3D Pro saw their latest airport release this week from Field Air Simulations uh, with the release of Copenhagen Airport. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I never really know what to, what to really say about when Tower 3D Pro 2 releases because it's an accurate runway layout as it appears uh, in, I think, yeah, probably around about twenty. It doesn't specify somewhere between twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen, um, and it just goes through a couple of details about the. It's got cross crosswind. It's got parallel. It's got a set of parallel runways plus a crosswind runway, um, and yeah. I don't really have much else to say about that. Uh, so you can pick this one up. Uh, it's pretty basic stuff, coming in for about 20 bucks, either via, you can either get a Steam Edition version or you can get one direct from Field Air Sims themselves. Um, funnily enough, they also do a pack of, so they do sort of generic, non-branded airlines. So they, do, they do this for most airports, most of the airports they release. They do a sort of uh, just generic, you know, non-airline sort of, uh, non-airline airlines uh, as your air traffic. But if you want to see real tails, and like real colors, um, it looks like it's not available for the Steam Edition. It's only available for the non-Steam Edition. And you uh, pick that up direct from Field Air Sims for about an extra 7 bucks if you do want to have uh, actual liveries on your traffic. If you're so, uh, there you go. If you want to do be an air traffic controller for uh, or an approach controller for uh, an airport, pick this one up available now from Steam or Field Air directly. Continuing on with other forms of simulation and moving into the world of the permanent way. Train Simulator saw a couple of releases this week. The first one was uh, the New Jersey Transit uh, U34CH locomotive. So this was a uh, diesel electric stalwart from the 1970s that would actually go through and serve well into the, uh, into, and was the, served into the 90s and retired in the middle of the 1990s. Uh, this was a long haul commuter train uh, sort of as the uh, rail network started expanding, the commuter rather the network started expanding and uh, people from uh, New Jersey were traveling, sort of uh, going through into New York. Um, so it became a very, uh, very popular route with a lot of content coming through and it was actually, to get that sort of speed and everything going, it actually is a, was a uh, push me, was a push me, pull me service. So you had both powered locomotives, both at the front and the rear. Uh, so this uh, rendition is the uh, General Electric U34 CH diesel in New Jersey Transit livery, will I say the Comet 1 cab cars and coaches also in the same livery, includes realistic locomotive operating features and controls including HEP setups, uh, also includes four career scenarios for the North Jersey Coast and Morristown Lines route if you have those as well. So this one's coming in, standard price coming in at $20 US or your original equivalent, available now on Steam. And the other release for Train Simulator this week uh, saw a release for harking back to a more classic era back into the 1930s and 50s, uh, which is quite a bit of a bit of a range there, was the Great Western Rail 7800 Manor class trains. Um, so this was a, an interesting, I'm reading up on the history of this one actually, apparently it was, um, the train itself was designed to fill a, a, a niche um, uh, between two other classes of trains that actually sort of 
suffered because they were um, the Hall and Grange classes because they were very those classes of trains were very, were excellent and considered great trains. However, there were a lot of parts of the routes they couldn't travel on because they were so heavy. So the 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 task was given to Great Western Rail to actually sort of design a of the Swindon works to actually design a train that had the same power but was significantly lighter. So they redesigned the boilers and changed some of the rolling um, frames and stuff like that in the actual framework. Then they came up with the 7800 Manor class. They reused a lot of the content from the 4300 class. Uh, and initially 20 locomotives uh, were rolled out of the Swindon works during the 1930s and early 40s. And they were put to work with mostly through the rural areas um, of uh, Wales and West Count and the West in the West Country. Um, and then later on, it was actually seen that they were still so effective that in the 1950s, an additional 10 locomotives are like, you know. 15, 20 years later, the production line was reopened again and additional 10 locomotives produced and soldered on well into uh, sort of one of the last trains, uh, steam power trains to be used in operational service. So pretty cool, pretty interesting little history for that. Um, and, and it ends up being that nine of them have actually survived into preservation and continue to be used uh, in a various uh, heritage works around the United Kingdom. Uh, so this is, uh, this is part of the Just, Just Trains' setup of their professional, their pro range, and it gives you a chance to experience the uh, a classic age of steam. It includes f uh, three different um, three different members of the Manor class, including 7, uh, 78, 21, 23, and 28. Uh, it gives you uh, realistic brake operation, detailed external and internal cab models, custom steam effects, Mark I coaches, and four standard and f one free roam scenarios for the Somerset and Dorset joint railway route. So, a lot of content here, pretty detailed for those of the fans of train, uh, for steam trains coming in at standard price of 20 US dollars, or your original equivalent, available now on Steam. Sticking with the permanent way, but moving into uh, Trains 2019, saw the release of three pieces of uh, DLC this week, which I'm not going to lie, I was a little confused about uh, with the, the release of this. So, um, so we saw the CP SD40-2. Uh, numbers 5865-5879 train, but released three times. Um, so we saw the release of the Multimark, the Dual Flags, and the Modern Block Letters edition. Now, reading the, the content of it, literally, it looks identical. Like, everything's the same about it. They have, each one has four different liveries. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just the fact that I'm not into trains that I'm not seeing the differences here. It looks like there's a couple of minor external modeling differences compared for each different one. I'm assuming because of during its lifetime, because um, it's supposed to be, carry, be the rendition of the trains um, we're doing 2002 and today. So that's a 18 year age bracket. So I'm assuming it's just showing variations between the three brackets. I don't know, but it seems to be that that seems to be just a little bit of a money-making exercise so each one of these is 14 bucks a pop um to me i would have thought maybe do one and then for say 15 bucks and then say do five bucks each for the other variants if you want them i i don't know it just it just seems odd i don't know so yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a trains person, so I don't really know. But I'd love to hear from you guys if you do have more opinions about this. Uh, so, but yeah, so you're looking at, you can either pick this one up on Steam or you can pick it up directly from uh, Trains Portal. Um, these are included as part of the silver and gold um, uh, platinum subscriptions. If you are a subscriber to the Trains 2019 series, available now. Sticking with ground transportation, but moving on to the asphalt. OMSI 2 saw a release this week uh, of what they're calling their Digital Bus Preservation uh, series of the Digibus Phantom. So this was a, uh, Phantom was based uh, on the high floor version of the Optair Spectra, which first appeared in 1992. Um, 
And this was when the design, the basic design, was uh, relaunched in 1998 as a low floor edition. Um, and uh, would actually go through and uh, soldier on and sort of it would be produced uh, for about until 2005. Uh, sadly, most of them have actually moved, have actually been, um, uh, well, I suppose, I suppose that's still 15 years ago, but most of them have actually left service now um, because of changes in emission regulations because they did have rather older engines, so they've actually sort of moved on from the, their existence. Okay. A couple of them have been preserved for those who uh, do like them, but they remind me. Just looking at it reminds me so much more of the the older London buses. It sort of like, it reminds me of the, like the modern version of the old London buses out of like the the old double decker buses out of like the Second World War. So. Anyway, uh, that's just me, perhaps. Anyway, but it includes a highly accurate 3D model, internal, internal, and external model based on scale drawings and photos of a real uh, of a real bus. Authentic engine and miscellaneous sounds recorded from an actual preserved unit. Uh, engine performance based on the DAF RS200 ATI engine. A choice of three or four speed gearboxes. Uh, and close of fully, includes fully operational roller blinds with destinations included for some of the most popular UK maps. A variety of other internal fixtures are included as well. Bench seating and 16 optional variations with, along with the nine bundled liveries. So a lot of content coming in through there. Coming in for a pretty standard price for 10 US dollars or the original equivalent available now on Steam. Sticking with the asphalt, but jumping up the pace a little bit, uh, Automobilista 2 came out this week. Well, it came out into early access anyway, which is interesting because I don't think Automobilista normally does early access. I thought they sort of just went to full release. Anyway, um, basically this is uh, an update from the... There's not. A, I don't have a lot of information with this one, unfortunately, because the press release is... is barely even half a page and it talks about stuff that's coming rather than what's here now so I'll be honest I don't have it I don't really know what's going on with this one um, what they can say is that they are working with the developers behind cars um, the project cars series which is interesting um, and, uh, and with an updated graphics and physics engine so looking kind of cool looking kind of interesting um, the price point is probably the one thing that's actually surprised me a little bit is um so the base price was is i actually found really affordable i thought it was really a really interesting price so it's, the base price is 30 bucks um which as far as top tier driving games goes that dirt cheap like it's absolutely dirt cheap um but then there's the season pass price tag so the season pass um, has so from their outlines uh, that they're looking at five a minimum uh, of five track DLC. So you may get more, um, and three expansion packs, three mainline expansion packs. So your five track packs. They've confirmed what two of them will be. One of them will be Hockenheim. One will be Silverstone, which would be classic to everybody who loves anything to do with British car racing. Uh, and then three major expansion packs, including Brazilian, which they titled Brazilian Legends, Racing USA, and Adrenaline. No idea of the content or cars or anything else about those. Um, so as I said, the base game is thirty bucks. The season pass is a hundred. But uh, based on the what they're quoting will be the decently the entry level price for if you bought all those DLC separately um, you'd be looking at probably saving yourself around about 100 150 bucks if you bought the, the season pass so um, I guess it's one of those things about do you t do you, do you roll the dice and for a title that's still in development or go from there but you don't have to buy the season pass straight away you can buy the the base title, see what it's like in the early access and see if you want to roll the dice. Uh, either way, both are available on Steam, uh, available now. And with that, that now rounds up the Nova app for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos or want to see more. And if you're wanting to do something, wanting something a little different for the flight simulators guys that might have stuck around to the end of this video, um, I am taking up a bit of live streaming over the next few weeks to give you guys some inspiration on different places and different things to do. Uh, so I'm going to be taking some journeys in Air Hauler 2. I'll be doing that on twice a week, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll be 
streaming over on Mixer. Just look for mixer.com forward slash Nova 24. I'll be streaming at about 10.30 Zulu on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next few weeks. So uh, check it out and also check for the highlight reels coming here on YouTube. So there you go. Give us a come and say hello or watch the replays uh, on Mixer or over here on YouTube. All right, folks, as I said, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget, safe sky, don't forget, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, stay home, stay home and simulate or stay home and flight sim. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.